Hello, my name is David Friedland and I'm with Texas Instruments. This is the first of a series of modules of the online SysBIOS training workshop. In this module, I'll be introducing SysBIOS for you. Before we start talking about the specifics of SysBIOS, I wanted to review some basic concepts of real-time operating systems. This may be useful to you if you're new to RTOSs. Most people are pretty familiar with the basic concepts of a general operating system. We depend on an OS to provide a set of low-level and middleware services. This can include things like getting the computer to boot up, handling basic I.O., allowing multiple programs to run concurrently, handling how memory and disk space is allocated for the different programs that are running, and allowing more sophisticated I.O. to occur through communication stacks, such as USB and Ethernet. An RTOS is similar to this, but it's tailored for real-time embedded systems. Because real-time systems tend to have very demanding requirements for responding to interrupts, the RTOS does too. In addition to fast response, it can also be very important that the response time be consistent and deterministic and not vary from frame to frame. Very often, embedded developers start using an RTOS because their systems are getting complex and need to become multi-threaded. So the RTOS needs to offer a robust set of services that will enable this. Similar to a regular OS, memory management can also be a critical function, but there will probably be more vigorous requirements to allow for low latencies when allocating and deallocating memory and to offer ways to avoid memory fragmentation, which can be a critical design aspect for embedded systems. File systems can also be needed for embedded systems, particularly if the system is using a hard drive, or more commonly these days, some kind of flash drive. It's often the case that embedded developers will start out with no RTOS at all and then begin using one when their design requires it. There are a myriad of reasons why a developer will end up using an RTOS, and I list some big ones here. One motivation to implement software using multiple threads is that it benefits both the organizational complexity of the code and the way the code can be developed. If threads can be written that are largely independent of one another, this tends to make the end application more modular and less spaghetti-like. It also allows the work to be partitioned among multiple people in an easier way. Using a standard set of software services like an RTOS can really help with portability and software lifecycle costs. This is particularly true for an RTOS like SysBIOS, which runs on a very diverse set of TI devices, such as a number of different DSP architectures, as well as the ARM9, ARM Cortex-M3, and MSP430 microcontrollers. I talked in the previous slide about how more complex applications can lead to the need for more complex threading models. Simple embedded apps are typically implemented using a superloop, but this can lead to problems as the application grows. SysBIOS offers a very wide set of thread types which we'll be introducing in forthcoming tutorials, including hardware interrupts, software interrupts, and tasks. This allows users quite a bit of flexibility in how they implement their applications. Peripheral devices being used in embedded systems are getting more complex all the time, so the code that drives these peripherals is also getting more complex, including use of sophisticated DMA and buffering schemes. SysBIOS delivers a number of services to aid in implementing device drivers and also an I.O. model so that the application can pass data to and from these devices in a standard and uniform way. Finally, SysBIOS provides a number of services to help developers debug their applications that go above and beyond what they would normally get. This includes methods for applications to throw assertions from within their code logging in both the application and down in the RTOS so that the developer can see what is happening while the program is executing, and also some real-time analysis tools so that the software can stream debugging data to the host, often without even stopping the processor to do so. 
In this series of BIOS tutorials, we will often make reference to threads, so it might be good to just spend a minute to discuss what this means. I should note that the exact definition of a thread can vary depending on the processor, architecture, and operating system being used. For the purposes of our discussion here, we will define a thread of execution as a set of program instructions that, once registers have been initialized, can be executed by the CPU. My reference to registers is important because the CPU can switch between different threads over time, and to do this, each thread defines a context that includes information about the program counter, stack, and critical registers. DSP BIOS defines four different thread types listed here, and we will spend time discussing each one in this tutorial. One key aspect of a thread is that it has a priority, which the scheduler uses as a criterion to decide which thread should execute at any given time. Priorities can be implicit. For example, we will see that each of the thread types listed here generally preempt the type listed below it. Some of these types are also given an explicit priority by the person writing the program so that one will run in favor of another. SysBIOS is a preemptive priority-based scheduler, so by definition its mission in life is to guarantee that the highest priority thread that is ready to run is in fact the one that is executing. We're going to discuss this slide in more detail in a later module, once we have introduced all these different thread types. But I just wanted to put this up right now to illustrate what a SysBIOS space system might look like. Here we can see not only a number of threads all executing together, but also a number of thread types. Because we have only one processor executing a single thread at any given time, the SysBIOS scheduler determines which thread runs at any given time. SysBIOS will prioritize hardware interrupts over other types of threads and software interrupts over tasks. Each of these types can prioritize a thread to preempt another. Thanks for listening to this portion of the SysBIOS online training. I hope it proved helpful. Please note that SysBIOS is included as a component to CoComposer Studio. However, if you would like to download SysBIOS as a standalone product, you can go to the webpage listed here. Also, if you have any questions about using SysBIOS, or if you would like to make suggestions on how to improve this training series, please post a comment to the TI E2E Forums BIOS page at the web address shown here. There are some very knowledgeable developers and users of SysBIOS who might be able to help you out. Good luck with your upcoming software development.